Whether you are a professional photographer or just intending to buy a new camera, the importance of lenses in capturing a perfect shot is an old hat. There are numerous prime and zoom lenses in the market to address different photographic needs and it is crucial to understand the differences between these two types of lenses in order to shoot a stunning image. In today's video, we are going to talk about the differences between a prime lens and a zoom lens. So without any further ado, let's jump in. At Camera Zone, our mission is to provide the most reliable updates of photography and cinematography gear, including expert opinion based on their performance and value. Focal length is the cornerstone of every lens and the main difference between a prime lens and a zoom lens lies in their ability to change the focal length. Prime lenses have only one focal length and you can't change it, meaning zooming in or out is not possible with prime lens. Similar to its focal length, prime lenses come with a single aperture. Usually, you will get a wider aperture in prime lens which allows more light into the sensor that gives you more exposure. On the other hand, zoom lenses come up with a range of focal length and also gives you the freedom to zoom in or out within that range. Besides, you can find zoom lenses with both variable aperture and constant aperture. If you use a variable aperture zoom lens, the opening of the lens gets narrower as you zoom in and your exposure is hampered as the amount of light falls on the sensor decreases. The amount of light entered into the sensor is particularly important in low light situations. As prime lenses come with wider maximum apertures than zooms, they tend to let in more light, meaning you will get better exposure in dark conditions without increasing ISO or slowing shutter speeds too much. Lower ISO makes your images grain free while slower shutter speed allow you to capture sharper images as compared to images you shoot with your zoom lenses. If you use a prime lens with wider aperture, you can substantially increase the sharpness of your low light or indoor shootings. Are you looking for images with shallower depth of field, in which the background is extremely blurred while the subject is crisp sharp? In that case, you will need a prime lens. As said before, prime lenses have a comparatively wider aperture. Thus, you can get the shallower effect. It is not like you can't achieve the effect using a zoom lens, but it can't match the bokeh quality a prime lens provides. One of the most common problems in photography is chromatic aberration, which refers to the color fringing around the edges of your image. All the lenses have some degree of chromatic aberration, though all those fringing are not always noticeable. Zoom lenses can sometimes give you chromatic aberration, particularly at their minimum and maximum focal lengths. Because of including more optics than prime lenses, zoom lenses are normally costlier. Reducing color aberration needs more optics to be used in combination. For example, to reduce the chromatic aberration of a convex lens, it needs to be combined with a concave lens. The more amount of glasses a lens have, the more amount of aberration correction glasses it needs, which results in an increase in price and weight as more optics are used. Except for some very high-end zoom lenses, most zoom lenses include a fewer amount of required aberration correction optics to keep the price and weight down, and thus, color fringing is more visible on a zoom lens. On the other hand, a prime lens doesn't have as many optics as a zoom lens, so it needs lesser amount of aberration correction glasses. As a result, you usually get less chromatic aberration on prime lenses compared to zoom lenses. If you take into consideration the money you pay for a particular lens and the image quality you get, then prime lenses are the way to go. If you compare a prime lens with any other zoom lens in a similar price range, you will find the image quality of the prime lens is better than that of zoom lenses. A prime lens would give you a more sharpness with awesome background bouquet.
If you are a traveler and want to bring your camera gear along with you, then you might want to take a prime lens with you. As they have only one focal length and fewer moving parts inside the lens, they are usually very compact and lightweight so that you can easily accommodate it into your backpack while saving more space for other important elements. On the other hand, zoom lenses have more glasses and moving parts as they are of variable focal length and thus they typically weigh more than prime lenses. However, as prime lenses only cover one focal length, you might need to carry more than one maybe even three to four prime lenses. In that case, you can take a zoom lens that covers a large focal length and would be more convenient. Besides, suppose you don't have a tripod and shoot images with your handheld cameras. In that case, you might find it difficult to carry a camera with a zoom lens as it is somewhat bulkier than a prime lens. Ease of use is one of the major differences between these two types of lenses. If you are a new photographer and you want to build some skills on lenses, then prime lenses have an easier learning curve. You can get a hold of prime lenses very quickly as you have to deal with only one focal length. So after using a prime lens for a while, you will learn pretty quickly how far you have to put your camera to get a perfect shot. On the other hand, if you are using a zoom lens, you have to learn different zooming mechanisms which might seem complicated to a beginner. Now if you take ease of photography into account, then zoom lenses will serve you more efficiently. If you have a wider range of focal length, like 18 to 200 mm, you can stand in one place and capture whatever you like within that range. On the other hand, if you are using a prime lens, you have to move on your feet to click a perfect shot as a prime lens covers only one focal length. Photographers are well aware of golden hours and how beautiful images you can take in that time period. Say you are going to cover a story and you need to shoot before sunset. In this situation, if you use prime lenses, you might need to change your lenses too frequently to get that desired focal length you want. And by doing so, you might end up not covering your entire story as you lost much time in changing lenses. That would be very frustrating, right? But if you had used a zoom lens, you wouldn't have to worry about changing lenses and you would have finished your work before sunset. For those who are more into run and gun shooting, autofocus is an important factor to consider when buying a lens. Prime lenses are a simple form factor with less inbuilt features. With the exception of some high-end prime lenses like Canon EF 100mm f by 2.8L. Most of the prime lenses don't offer built-in image stabilization. Meanwhile, in most zoom lenses, you will find built-in image stabilization, which ensures your images look sharp and blur-free when you are capturing a distant object. Now let's take a look on the usage of both prime and zoom lenses. Say you are a wildlife photographer and you want to take a close shot of a tiger or any other wild animal. So obviously, you won't go near the vicious animal. Rather, you will stand at a safe distance and use a lens that can zoom and a zoom lens would let you do that. Besides wildlife photography, zoom lenses are also widely used in sports. On the other hand, if you are shooting indoors where you or your subject won't change position frequently, a prime lens is the best choice for you. Prime lenses are also widely used in vlogging and street photography. We have seen that both prime and zoom lenses have their own pros and cons and that's why most photographers use both type of lenses for various situations. So what lenses do you have at your disposal? Let us know in the comment section. Thanks for watching. We always crave to learn more. If you think we missed a product or another needed to add, we'd love to hear yours.